Here is how to make a stamp border. First, we're going to create a new document. And I'm going to work in inches in this case. I'm going to make an artboard bigger than my stamp to start. It'd be possible to do this without um, by making the stamp the artboard exactly the same size as the stamp, um, but I'm going to make mine bigger. In this case, the stamp is one by one and a half or one and a half by one, um, and I'm going to make this three and a half by two. Also, it's set to CMYK color. Also, the raster effects are set on high in the off chance this needs to be used for printing. I'm going to cl click create. And here is my document. Then we're going to go to the rectangle tool. And I'm going to option click with the rectangle tool. You'll see I get a dialog box. I'm going to type in the width is one and a half inches and the height is one inches. That way I'm sure that my rectangle is exactly the correct size. I click OK and there's my rectangle. And what I can also do is I can position this rectangle. If I go to my properties palette and I go down to transform, You'll see that the width of my rectangle is 1.5 and the height is one inch. So I could resize the rectangle here and I can position it with the X and the Y axis. And I'm going to set X to one and I'm going to set Y to 0.5 and hit return and then it's positioned. Next, I'm going to go up to the ellipse tool and I'm going to option click and I'm going to make this 0.08 inches by 0.08 inches. Click OK and there is my circle and I'm going to position it up here. I'm going to set it at 1.05. So in other words, point o, half an, um, 0.05 inches in from the uh, left hand side and then down is going to be 0.46. And that positions it there. In case you're wondering, um, I spent a fair amount of time working out where these are actually going to be positioned. Um, more work for me, easier for you, and but it also tells you that you can use this positioning to exactly position an item where you want it to be. Okay, next I want to copy this. So I'm going to go to Object, Transform, Move. And I'm going to set it to the x-axis, the horizontal axis. I'm going to set to 0.1325. And I'm going to set the vertical movement to 0. And I'm going to click Copy. And then I have a copy of it. And I can go back to Object transform, move, use the same measurements and hit copy. But of course that takes a little while. So I can also go to object, transform, transform again, which does the same thing. Or if I go to object, transform, transform again, I see that it also says command D next to it, which means that I can use the uh, key command, command D to copy. So I'm going to hit command D until I have enough. 
of my circles for the top of the perforation. Next, I'm going to take my black arrow and I'm going to select all of these items and not the rectangle, just the circles. And I'm going to go to Object Group. And if I move these, you'll see that they now move as a group. And I'm going to hit Command Z to put them exactly back where they were. Then I want a copy of this and I want to rotate it. Um, so I can Option Drag to create a copy. And I've been, ha if I get exactly in the right place on the edge, I can, and I get the double headed arrow, then I can rotate. And if I hold the shift key, it'll rotate in 45 and 90 degree turns. Or I can go to my rotate tool and option click and type in 90 and click OK. Next, I'm going to drag this down here. I notice that I've got some extra circles, so I'm going to take my white arrow and select those and hit delete a couple of times to get rid of the extra ones. But these all still remain in a group. And if I want to position these, and I do, then I can go up here and um, X is going to be 0.96. And then Y is going to be 0.6425. Okay, and they're now perfectly positioned. Then I'm going to grab this group and option shift drag them down straight down and I'm going to grab this group and option option shift drag them across and so now I have perforations all around then what I want to do is I'm going to hold my shift key and click and click and click until all four, excuse me, seem to be falling into that. Shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, and shift, click. And now I'm going to group them, object group. And if I drag them, you'll see that they are a group and they don't include the rectangle, which is very important. And then I'm going to hit Command Z to take that back. Finally, I'm going to select both the group of, of groups of circles and the rectangle. And then I'm going to go to Pathfinder and I'm going to go to click to, uh, click to minus front. And you'll see that when I do that, I've deleted the circles from the rectangle and I now have a perfect stamp border. And then I can go to my stroke and adjust what I want that border to look like. And that is your stamp border.